He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Hello, my name is Charlie. You may know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, and I'm here to talk to you today about acting through Mary, or Marian devotion in the Via Creativa. This is a big topic. I know I keep saying that for all of these, but that's why these are the first ones we chose to do because they are so huge and so important for us to understand as we walk the path of creation spirituality. Matthew Fox tells us that the via creativa, the creative way in it, we find God in our generativity where we co-create with God in our imaginative output. We trust our images enough to birth them and ride them into existence. Now this If there ever was a place to find Mary, it's here. She was the first of us to birth Christ into the world. And she did it alone, without models. She did it by carrying him for nine months in her womb we often take longer. (laughs) We often take a long time to forge our hearts into the shape of his sacred heart. But as long as we are acting through her most immaculate heart and in her intentions and through her, we have a better chance of living a holy and pure life. San Luis de Montfort tells us that when we act through Mary, we learn to never go to the Lord without her intercession. And this is true. She is the Gibera, the queen of heaven, who sits like she did in Solomon's day. The queen sits The Queen Mother sits at the right hand of the King and has his ear. And so we learn to go to her and through her. But this is so much more than limiting this idea to just what happens in prayer. So many, when they discuss spirituality or spiritual actions or spiritual development, spend so much time talking about meditation and prayer and looking inwardly and inwardly and inwardly. And I'm not saying that you should neglect that. You should do that. You should do a lot of that because it will help you to perfect yourself into the image of God. But that is not the end all be all. That is not the last thing. That is not the most important thing because in the end, our formation comes from our re- our interaction with others. Our true formation is not who we are sitting alone when our candles are lit, our incense is burning. We have on the music that puts us into that spiritual frame of mind and we allow ourselves to drift away into a lazy haze of spirituality. And I don't say that to insult that. I think you need to have time for devotion. I think that you have to have time for meditation and time to set aside to bring yourself into the presence of God and to have those moments of isolation and solitude. I think that those are important. But those are aspects of the Via Negativa. Today, we're talking about the creative way, working through Mary. It's in the creative way that we remember that we are co-laborers with God. And we can see this 
in Mary's own life. She worked with God from beginning to end. In the beginning with her glorious fiat, where she said, Let it be done unto me, according to your word, when asked if she would bear the Son of the Most High. We see it in her carrying out the works of the law when she took her son to be dedicated in the temple. We see it at the wedding of Cana where she asks her son to turn the water to wine. And he says to her, my time is not yet come. And she just turns to the servants there and says to them, whatever my son tells you, do it. And Jesus, being a good son, turns the water to wine. We see this at his crucifixion, where she co-labors with him in the brokenness of her human heart and the near shattering of her soul under the cross. We see this in the great and glorious day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes down upon her. She was the first of the faithful. She was the first of us. She's the model for us, and she co-labored with Christ through her entire life. And so for us, we need to look at this as an example. How are we participating in that nativity? How are we participating in birthing God into the world? How do we do that? Through Mary, we were, we work for an internal sense of justice. We work in our gardens, maybe. We work to make good food. We work to say what needs to be said for the restoration and reconciliation of the world. We work for peace. We work for compassion. We work for justice because these are the things that our God demands of us. And so we continue to work and with Mary and through Mary to be co-laborers with God. So what does that look like? When you, I'm a writer. And so when I go to write, I say a prayer, a simple prayer that through her intercession and through her hands, I may be inspired to write. I'm a podcaster. When I go to talk, I say a prayer and I ask that through her hands and through her intercession, I will have the words to say. And whether they are the right words or the wrong words, I am ultimately responsible for that. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I'm writing scripture or anything. But I want them to be the right words, the words that I am meant to say, the words that I need to say in the very core of my being. And that is what it means to work through Mary. That our mother has been through this before, she knows what is best for us. She knows what it is that we need to do, say, and be. And so with our blessed mother at our side, and through her help and her intercession, we act, we create, we paint, we sing, we dance. We do the work that we are called here to do, through her, with her, in her, and by her. It is a powerful, powerful action. Just take a moment. Consider what that means. When you were a child, maybe you went into the kitchen and helped bake cookies with your mother. This is something that I think about a lot. This is something that you did with her, but it's also something you did through her. Because under her guidance and through the help that she gave you in showing you how to mix everything, this is one of my fondest memories of childhood, is my mom teaching me how to make chocolate chip cookies and counting out the chocolate chips and rolling the dough balls. And the t her teaching me to do this, I am now, through my hands, working through her hands because she has shown me what to do. She has shown me the way to do it. And that's what we're looking for. That gentle, sweet, loving guidance that comes to us from the Queen of Heaven. 
we learn from her the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of our very soul, that we are here to bring God into this world and to reconcile it with him. And so we have all been given many, many gifts. She being the treasurer of heaven, the gate of all heavenly graces, knows the gifts that we've been given better and before we do. And so learning to work through her, we learn to act wisely. And again, it's all about prayer. It's all about entering the state of realizing that everything that we do is an act of prayer. We are a living temple. Our lives are a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Every action, every word, everything that we do is a prayer to God and to the cosmos. And so in our actions, through our humility, in submitting to our Blessed Mother, we ask her what it is that we should do. How is it that we should say these things? How is it we should do these things? How is it that we should take the clay into our hands and sculpt it? How is it that we should put the paint on the canvas? How is it that the words or the tones should come from our mouth? How is it that the ingredients should come in? And when people talk like this, you often hear this cynical derision. I hear this a lot in people that don't get the end of Star Wars A New Hope, episode four, where Luke is going down the Death Star Trench and he is using his targeting computer and you hear the voice of Ben Kenobi, use the force, Luke. And he turns off the computer, he closes his eyes, he sees what he has to do and he just does it. And I hear people all the time deriding this and saying, see, that's what I really want. Somebody who'll just close their eyes and hope that they get there. Hope that if, if this shot misses, all my friends are going to die, but I closed my eyes and really believed. And all I can think of is how sad that these people don't understand what they're talking about. It's not about closing your eyes and believing that's what you do in the story because you're wanting to make it visual. But it's about learning to surrender in that moment. When we do things through Mary, we are surrendering up what we are doing to her, to the divine imagination, to God. And we begin to see our art, the things that we do, in context as something meant to heal the world. And that might stress you out because you think, so every time I cook lunch and make a bologna sandwich, I am supposed to be mending the world. Yes. <laughs> yes. When you're spreading the ketchup on the bread, you're healing the world. Why? Because whether you're doing it for yourself, for your child, or for another loved one, what you are doing is communicating to them ever so subtly how much love you have for them. You just splat some ketchup on the bread and smush it together. It's not a lot of care. It's not a lot of concern. And so we act through our blessed mother and we realize what do we do? Well, for the flavor to be there, we need to spread it out. So we get a little knife and we put our dab down and we brush it out to the corners with our knife, with our bread knife. And that little bit of caring that little note that our parents used to send with us at lunch. Those little things. That flower that you happen to find. That little note from your loved one. It's those little things that show that you care. They gave attention to this. And that's what is asked of us. No, that bologna sandwich is not going to save the world. But it can show the person that it is made for, even if that is yourself. I remember when we were having a lot of financial troubles and all we had to eat was occasionally when we really splurged, we ate ramen, but generally we would buy a giant bag of basmati rice and a couple chicken breasts 
and we had some seasoning and a big bag of onions because onions were cheap. And so every day we had two meals of rice, onion, and we would take one chicken breast and split it amongst the two of us for those two meals. So we had to make four meals out of that one chicken breast. But those are some of the happiest meals of my life because the spices were also cheap. So we would experiment and we would play and we would learn to make things that tasted good and tasted differently, even though we were having the same thing for every meal. That is the way of creativity. That is working through our mother to show our care and our love and to bring reconciliation into the world. I've eaten at very fancy restaurants, but my happiest food memories is that little bit of chicken, little bit of onion, and those seasoned rice bowls that we used to have. Because that's all you have to look at there is that love and that care that went into making it. Because it's not, it can't be lost in the fanciness of the ingredients. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, making a bologna sandwich can repair the world. Making those rice bowls were restorative to our spirits because we could see how much we loved each other in the making of them. The power of that resonates within me today, and that was over a decade ago. That's the power of love. That's the power that we can unleash in the world when we act through the immaculate heart of our mother. In that sweetness, in that light, It can be as simple as when a friend is crying, putting your hand on their knee or on their shoulder or on their back. It could be just looking into their eyes so that they can see that you see them. Because we tend to look away when someone cries. And all we need so often in those moments is someone, anyone to look at us and say, I see you. I feel your pain. I understand. It's the little things that matter. And it's the little things that add up to big things. When was the last time you said thank you to someone? When was the last time that you told a stranger, have a nice day and meant it? Think about it. You can hear the difference when somebody just says as a colloquialism, have a nice day. Or when they really mean it. I mean, have a nice day. Really, have a nice day. May your day be filled with nothing but goodness and light. I mean it. And you can hear the difference between the platitude and the thing that really, really works. and really matters. This is what we learn when we act to, learn to act through Mary. To mean the little things. To care for the little things. Just as Mary is our mother, we learn to see God as our mother. And with Mary, we learn to see God as our child. When you're dealing with others who are living in God, you love them as you love the child in them. You love them with all your heart. And sometimes they don't make that easy. (laughs) I know that. Sometimes it's very, very hard, but that's when it's most important. When your child says something hurtful, you don't disown the child and throw the child out. Because if you ever really loved them, if you ever really had love in your heart, it stings when that happens. But the love wins out in the end. And this is what it means to learn to have the courage to live this, to have the courage to live those divine things into the world. Sometimes we want revenge. Revenge is not of God. Justice 
is of God, and justice is hard. Justice is difficult. Sometimes justice is mercy. Justice is always compassionate. And so this is what we learn. So remember that when we're, you're thinking of what can I do courageously when, when that idea comes up that I should courageously live those things that I love into the world. What does that mean? Have the courage to ride them into existence. What does that mean? It can be the most glorious painting. It could be Guernica that shows the horrors of war. And that you just look at and it stops you and you just realize how horrible this thing is. Or it could be putting ketchup on that bologna sandwich. It could be something that easy. Whatever it is that shows your heart. And I mean your heart, not the emotions that get cast on top of it. Those are different things. And together we can learn that and live that. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, share it. Tell a friend about what we're doing here. I really hope that these have been helping you. And if they have, you can help us by telling other people about it. We don't do this for money. We don't do this for anything except for the love of God and love of our mother. And because we have seen creation spirituality change our own lives and the power of God move through us. And we want to share that with as many people as we can. So if we've helped you and you know one person that this could be helped by, share it. Tweet it. Post it to Facebook. Whatever you want to do. We're doing some images to go along with these that you, hopefully you find good that you could put on your Pinterest or Instagram, but please share us, help us to grow, help us to connect to those people that need to hear this message. You can connect with me. I'm wisdom cries out on Twitter. You can find this and all of our teachings over at wisdomscry.com. You also find links to all of our other social media networks there, particularly our Facebook page. I thank you so, so much for listening. God bless you.